I have rights. Say it. I have rights. Rights. I have rights. I have rights. Yes. This is what my Nana would demand of me when I was a little girl. I have the right to vote. I have the right to hold property. I have the right to fair and equal credit. I have rights, a lot of them. My grandmother used to say this to me all the time. She lived through a time when women were not afforded all those rights. She would make me repeat after her different rights, just to show me how many I had from unalienable rights to rights afforded under warranties. I have the right to return this faulty toaster. I knew she was going to get really fired up about something when I'd hear her mutter under her breath, I have rights. I have rights. That meant the person on the other end of the phone was about to get an education in fine print. There, fine print. Health insurance, banks, billing departments, businesses, she read it all. No one was safe if they weren't honoring the fine print in their contract. And I loved it. I used to listen in. I saw the power in the fine print. When I was 19, my sociology professor required us to write a contract that said, I read the syllabus, I agree to the dates that the work is due, and I'm aware of your attendance policy. Both the student and the professor would then sign the contract to make it real. He said this was to teach us how the real world works. I thought this was great. Nana taught me all about contracts. It was going to be very clear what was expected from us with no surprises at the end of the semester. So I sit down to type up my contract and I get to the section of the syllabus about attendance. This man, had a punitive attendance policy that for every three classes you miss, he would drop you a full grade point. Meanwhile, our grade was based on turning in papers. We didn't have one single in-class presentation. So if I got A's on all my papers, but missed three classes, I'm gonna get a B? Oh, no, 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 no. I was on an academic scholarship. There was no way that this attendance policy was going to mess with my scholarship. Now, I went to college in the frozen tundra that is upstate New York. I knew that it was going to snow, like a lot, and I was going to miss class. What would Nana do? <laughs> and it was here that I remembered dealing with an issue at the student radio station. A famous DJ who was booked for a campus event, didn't show up because there was a blizzard and he still sent an invoice. Well, I got my hands on that contract and sure enough, there was a force majeure clause in there that says, in the event of an act of God, i.e. the blizzard, he would still be paid even if he didn't perform. The person that hired the DJ didn't read the contract before signing and the radio station still had to pay. I have rights. So I wrote in a force majeure clause into my contract that said, should I miss any classes due to inclement weather, as long as I notified the professor in advance of class, his attendance policy would be waived. I printed it, signed it, and dropped it off for my professor to sign, which he did. No notes, no cross-throughs, nothing. So I waited until after class and I said, so everything's okay with my contract? I signed it, you're all set. Oh. Okay, so you read it. I signed it. You're all set. Okay, great. Thanks. At the end of the semester, I met with my professor, and we're reviewing all of my work, all eight papers. <laughs> and he's going on and on about how great my work was, how I showed such an impressive grasp of the material. If only I had attended all of the classes, I would have gotten an A in his class. He's so sad that he has to dock my grade, but that's the contract we signed. Um, pardon me, but I didn't have any absences that fall outside of the force majeure clause. I directed his attention to our contract. He jumps up from his desk and explodes at me. You are invoking an act of God clause? Well, I was pretty shocked at the level of anger being directed towards me by the same person that had just told me how great my work was the minute before. 
there was a split second where I thought to myself, is he going to fail me? Because he's the professor and he has all of the power in this relationship and I've made him so angry. No, I have rights. We have a signed contract. I am in control here. So I took a deep breath and calmly said, uh, yes, you'll see right there, I specifically mention inclement weather, and you will see here that I emailed in advance as per our contract. He was fuming. I got my A. I called my Nana. Hey, Nana, I have rights. <laughs> that moment, <laughs> that win over authority on the fine print, whew, on the fine print the power. Whew. That same power helped me earn the respect of CEOs and general counsels while I was still in my early 20s. That same power has enabled me to negotiate huge deals and structure international companies. In the face of authority, confidence is critical. And while it helps me to know I'm right, that's not always enough to win the battle. It is the power of the fine print that both defends me and gives me the upper hand. Now, I know, I know the fine print can make us feel powerless. The sheer volume of it, the waves of legalese, the sign it or else attitude of whoever presents it. Tech companies use it to harvest our data. Banks use it to harvest fees and interest. But if I am ever feeling overwhelmed, I take a deep breath and I remind myself, I have rights and they are in the fine print. Awesome. <laughs>